boys and girls, students of Buddhist Sunday School, parents, grandparents, teachers of Sunday School and moral education. May you all be well and peaceful. Now, we are going to tell you a very famous story, an Aesop fable that has a very good moral and there are wisdom lessons we can learn. The Aesop's fable is titled The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse. A very famous fable. You have probably heard it before, but it doesn't matter. We will go over the story and then after that, discuss some of the wisdom lessons we can learn from this fable. Now, a fable is actually a short story where the characters are usually animals and these fables teach very good moral lessons. You have many, many of Aesop's fables you might have read before. So, we are going to tell you this one of the country mouse and the town mouse. Now, we are going to show you the PowerPoint and I'm going to read the story and you can learn English, grammar and also reading skill, listening skill. You can learn now. Uh, so let us now launch the PowerPoint. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse. So you can see the picture here, you have actually these two mice and I think this one should be the town one, you see he, he or she, he dresses uh, very stylishly, uh, more expensive clothes, whereas this country mouse who lives in the village far away from the city or the town, he dresses very simply, isn't it? Right? Uh, so let us now look at the story. Uh, you can see some animation and there's a squirrel here and then the two birds flying right and actually there is a, a mouse here actually right there's a, a mouse crawling right okay uh, here you can see another slide uh, you can see this taken from tom and jerry i think huh? uh, the Cat uh, always uh, chases the mouse or the rat. You see, the mouse or rat is very terrified. Uh, it's Tom and Jerry. And here, of course, you have this cat trying to bounce on this mouse. Right? So let us uh, go to the story. Once upon a time, there was a town mouse and the country mouse. The town mouse, of course, lives in the city or the busy town. Whereas the country mouse lives in the rural area, maybe the kampong or the village side, far away from the town. What a difference, isn't it? So they were cousins. Uh, uh, cousins. So the country mouse live far out in the country, as I said just now. So now let us go on to the next slide. The hole where the country mouse lived was very quiet. She had a little bed made out of sticks, crumpled paper, and dried straw. Country mouse stored her nuts and other food in a corner for winter. So the home of the country mouse is a very, very simple one. It's just a, a hole, right? Uh, maybe in a, a small uh, bunk of uh, soil or maybe somewhere in uh, the backyard of the village house or whatever. Lah, right? And uh, in that hole, right, she made her little bed using the sticks, the dry sticks, and then some crumpled you know, paper that had been crumpled and not smooth already. And then dried straw, the grass that has been dried. So she made a simple bed 
And then also, she collected some nuts and other food and put in the corner of her home for winter. Winter probably very difficult for the mouse to go out to get food. So she stored some food. Now one day, country mouse was happy to see her cousin, town mouse, stop by for a visit. Ah, the town mouse came to see the country mouse, the cousin. Town mouse was tired from a long walk and was grumpy. Now this town mouse, uh, you know, a grumpy person, not patient, not used to work or hardship. Whereas the country mouse, uh, you know, more hardworking. Right? She would try to find her food, right? go out into the vast space to exercise, and she would be used to long walk. But this town mouse, not like that. Grumpy, tired. So, town mouse came into the whole of country mouse. Huh? So, the country mouse invited the town mouse into her simple home. You know, she, she looked around the little home of country mouse, uh, very, very proud and snobbish. Do you really live in this dark hole? Uh, that's a spelling mistake. That uh, should be H-O-L-E. Under the hill. Or oh, is under a small hill. Uh, so the mouse, the country mouse made a hole and then got the home ready. Uh. Town mouse asked, it is so small. It is so dark. You hardly have any room. Can this be your real home? Ah, uh, I know she was criticizing the person. Ah. What type of home? Ah? So small, you can live here, man. Ah, yeah. So you see, ah, very, very proud of beach, isn't it? So this is the country mouse. This is the town mouse. And this is the simple bait of the Country mouse, made of straw, all right, and some crumpled paper, right? Very, very simple only. Uh, and then in the corner, she thought some nuts and other types of food for the winter. Country mouse felt bad. La. She became quite upset because uh, she knew that the cousin, the town mouse, uh, was looking down upon her, la, uh, criticized her. Small home, right? Then she said, Of course, this is my real home. I have everything I need here. I like my home. So the country mouse was quite happy and contented. She did not need much, just some simple basic things a place to stay, a place to sleep, and some food to eat. She was quite happy already. But this tongue mouse uh, uh, started to boast uh, and then criticize again. Uh, tongue mouse told country mouse that her home was only fit for ants and bugs and maybe cockroaches also. Ah, your home uh, uh, should be lived by the ants and the bugs. Uh. You should see my home, said tongue mouse. A home in the city. Uh. My house has large hallways to run down. Oh. Every day there is a feast to eat crumbs under the table, said Tong Mouse. Of course, probably a big house with many halls and then dining area. And you say that every day, you know, after the people have eaten, so there will be a lot of good food uh, left behind under the tables or so. We could have a feast. My food is good here in the country, say country mouse. Here, take a piece of this fine apple core, right? Ah, I say, uh, take this apple core, and here is a piece of the ring of the cheese. Uh, so let's look. You see, uh, this country mouse uh, offered the cousin, the town mouse, the core of the apple. Uh. Of course, you don't expect to have the whole apple, perhaps, because people have eaten it, but they are quite okay. You can take as food. So this country mouse offered 
And then also the cheese, uh, you know, cheese, uh, you have an outer covering, we call the ring, the ring of the cheese, just like, you know, some fruits, you have outer skin. Uh. So actually it can be eaten, but many people, they don't eat the outer skin, a bit hard. Uh. Uh, so the mouse uh, could eat, right, the ring of the cheese. So she offered to the cousin, uh, the cousin, uh, look dumb about this type of food. Uh. Town mouse could not believe that country mouse would eat an old ring of cheese. Uh, she was shocked. She, of course, wanted to eat the proper cheese. She thought, oh, yo, you were eating the outer skin so hard. Ah. He said, in my house, ah, said town mouse, there's a big rumor just filled with all kinds of cheese. Ah. You know what? Ah. Mice and rats are like to eat cheese, isn't it? Right? So uh, he, he looked down upon the country mouse and the type of remnants from the cheese, the cheese outer skin, the, the ring. So the town mouse complained and complained and said, I cannot live in this dark little hole any longer. Okay, there's a slightly mistake, H O L E. Uh. I cannot live in this dark little hole any longer. Why don't you come with me, dear cousin, to my house in town? You will see how nice we mice really live there. Uh, so she invited the country mouse to go to a place in the town, maybe in a big house. Uh, she lived. So what did the country mouse say? The country mouse accepted the invitation. So the town mouse and the country mouse set off for their long walk to the town. Right? They walked to the town. And then the town mouse started to boast again. Wait until you see my house. It is the grandest of all houses. Uh, the most grand. Uh, maybe largest or most beautiful or most expensive. Lah. So very proud. So at last, the two mice reached the beautiful house where the town mouse lived. So town mouse went under the door first, right? And then the country mouse followed. The town mouse led the way down the long hallway, probably to the end of the hallway, right? The passage, the passage. And then they came to what we call a pantry. A pantry is not a kitchen. A kitchen is larger. This pantry may be just a small room where it's stored, you know, the various types of food. Then you have the drinks or beverages. And then sometimes you can find some plates or uh, pots or glasses, uh, cups. Uh, this is the pantry where you get the food, right? In our Buddhist association also, uh, in the Bodhicitta building, uh, we find that we have a pantry area, right? More fridge there, and then uh, you have the plates, the cups, and the three one drinks, and then the uh, kettle for you to boil water. So you can uh, take some simple tea or snacks. Lah. So inside, uh, uh, so you can see here what happened. Inside was the most food country mouse had ever seen, you know. So the country mouse saw, wow, so much food uh, in this pantry area that is in the big house. Ah. Ah. So, country mouse look around, no? around the pantry, no? and she saw wow, ham, la, cheese, la, and all kinds of food. Her whiskers began to tremble. Right? Whiskers, you know, uh, rats and mice uh, have this long whiskers. Uh. Uh, we have moustache la, and beard. So they have the whiskers because she was very excited, no? right? And of course, uh, she could smell, uh, so she was very excited at what she was seeing. Then country mouse ran over to a big piece of cheese. Uh, then the town mouse shouted at her, stay away from there. There is a trap inside that will snap you into two pieces. Ah, in this place, uh, the owners uh, put the Mouse traps, you know, you're not careful, uh, you can be caught and you can be killed by the 
about traps. Get up here on the shelf. Ah, so this town mouse asked the country mouse, quickly get up into the high shelf there. You'll be safe here. Ah, so that's what the town mouse told the country mouse. So the country mouse was very scared. Of, well, luckily, she didn't go to uh, eat the big piece of nice cheese that she'll be trapped. You know, and then might be killed also. You see how dangerous it is. So then let us see what happens next. Hurry, hide. It is the cook, shouted down mouse. You know, they were on top of the shelf already. Huh? So uh, they just jumped up on the shelf like, and they hid behind a jar of pickles. Now, pickles will be like preserved vegetables, huh? preserved cucumbers, huh? or some types of vegetables they preserve, right? So, very big jars usually. So they hid behind the Just then the cook uh, knew there were mice right inside. Mice yelled the cook. So the cook called for the big cat. Right? The cook called here, yeah, kitty, kitty, catch those mice at once, or there will be no supper for you. And that's what the man shouted, and the cook uh, shouted, asked the kitten. Uh, the kitten already is a cat already. Uh, it's a cat, right? To catch the mice. So uh, of course, you know, very scary, lah. Right? This especially the country mouse that lives so peacefully in the countryside. Uh, now are very scared, you know, because uh, the life is at stake, you know. She might be eaten by the cat or all up or caught by the people, the cook. Uh, so let's see whether the country mouse die or not. Then the big door was slammed shut. Probably the cook left, right? Then the large tomcat, uh, it's a big cat, uh, jumped onto the shelf, you know. So now you're at the same level already. Uh, but the two mice were hidden behind the jars of pickle. Uh. So wow, the two mice uh, scurried to the floor. They quickly rushed or in a hurry uh, made their way to the floor, uh, right? And they escaped just as the cat jumped down to the floor, right? Uh, the cat also saw that the rats had jumped down to the floor. So the cat wanted to catch the rats or the mice. So the cat saw the end of the tail of the town mouse go into a hole in the wall. Uh, so the town mouse, uh, because the town mouse is used to this sort of dangerous setting. So, uh, she or he uh, could escape very fast. Lah. She knew where it would be the place to run to escape. Lah. But the country mouse, uh, not so lucky, uh, and then so unfamiliar with this uh, place uh, that to her was a very dangerous place. Lah. Right? Wow, the country mouse, huh? Still shaking, you know, very scared, trembling, you know. Of course, the town mouse uh, had run uh, through a hole uh, to hide herself. Uh. So she tried to look out of the to look out the hole uh, to see if she could see the big cat, right? Uh, so she probably made her way to the hole also or another hole. But anyway, she could see the cat. Of course, maybe the cat uh, could not enter into the hole, it was too small for her body or for the cat's body. La. So then this country mouse saw the cat licking or lapping up milk from a saucer. Right? The owner had put a saucer of milk to you know cats uh, uh, like to take the milk. La. So the cat was licking uh, with the tongue the milk. La. Wow! This country mouse uh, was very, very scared uh, because she had never seen such a big cat. It was the biggest cat she, has, she had ever seen, you know. Wow, so she was very, very frightened uh, that her life uh, would be in danger. Would be in danger. This is not safe here, said the country mouse. I must try to get out and go back to my own home. Uh. 
Uh, because she saw that it was very dangerous. You, uh, there might be other cats also with this, and then also people around her with the traps. So, so the country mouse uh, kept looking at the cat lapping his milk. Uh. So the cat was so occupied taking the milk, so the country mouse knew that she had to escape. Uh. So she quickly ran out of the hole, ran for the door uh, before the cat could pounce on her reasoning. And this country mouse, wow, she ran as fast as she could, uh, faster than she had ever run before. Uh, right? So country mouse squeezed under the door already. And then she ran down the hallway. Right? Just now was the pantry area. Yeah. So she ran down the hallway, kept looking behind her uh, to see if the cat was coming to get her or not. The cat was still really easy, really cat, uh, still uh, lapping the milk. Uh. So, the country mouse, what did she do? When she reached the front door, she made it to the front door. All right? The cat was still lapping the milk. So she slid, didn't she? All right? Went under the door. You know, their bodies are small and there will be a gap. Huh? So she ran under the door and then ran uh, as fast as she could. Uh. Uh, because she was afraid uh, the cat would come and chase her, you know, and then uh, eat her. So the country mouse ran and ran and ran all the way home. Uh, she looked all around her cozy little home. Wow, she really liked her home. It was neat and clean. She had everything she needed already. Very safe. So she was more peaceful and happy in that small room of hers. And the other friend's home, huh? wow, she really was very frightened. No doubt there was a lot of food, but you could not eat it in safety. You could not eat peacefully. Huh? There, will be, there will be people out to trap you. There will be cats huh? waiting to catch you and kill you, huh? isn't it? Right? So it was very, very stressful huh? living in the home of the town mouse. So, what happens to the country mom? So, she was very tired after running uh, for her life, isn't it? So, she ran on top of a little bed, very cozy bed that she had made. She was very tired, really, uh, having to uh, <laughs> run such a distance. Uh, she had to run for her life. Uh, uh. So, when she thought carefully, she said, wow, the visit. Uh, with town mouse uh, to the town mouse home. Uh. It was very scary, uh, very tiring, uh, drain my energy, uh, right, frightened me so much. Uh. So it was not a pleasant and happy visit to the town mouse place in the city. Uh. Uh, so she found the peace of the home. Uh, you see? Uh, and then she said to herself, I have a simple home. Right? She said to herself, I have a simple home. It is much better than all the food and fancy things of living a town life, said country mouse. So she thought, no point, uh, you know, in the town, uh, living there, so stressful, uh, right? No doubt, uh, you have a lot of fanciful things and good food, uh, but you cannot eat in peace. Uh, uh, you might die uh, right? because of the cats and the people there uh, out to trap you and kill you. They, I better stay in my simple home so much more peaceful. So you can see peace now. She could sleep soundly in safety. Peace. Uh, uh. So that's a, a very simple story, isn't it? Right? So now let us learn the important lessons of wisdom. Right? As of Shavers give the moral, uh, but we are now going to look at the wisdom aspect. Uh, and there are good Dharma points, you know, Dharma messages from this as of Fable. Uh, here, right? You can see some pictures of these two country, right? Uh, mice, uh, 
you find very, very happy dancing, isn't it? Uh, not stress up. So, now what can we learn? Let's look at the first one. Live a simple life with few ones. You'll be more peaceful. People think that, wow, oh, if you have a lot of things, uh, the human beings, uh, some human beings, uh, they think that you have a lot of money, uh, with big cars, big houses, uh, lots of luxurious things, uh, rich food to eat, uh, then they will be very happy. Is it so? It's not really so. You read in the newspaper, you find so many rich people. They suffer in stress also. Uh, great singers, Michael Jackson, have heard of. Uh, uh, and then also you have uh, uh, Whitney Houston. Uh, and then also you have the uh, Korea K-pop singers. You know, committed suicide, I think. Taking drugs. So they have all the things, uh, but their life very complex. Uh, right? Not simple life. So many things, uh, very, very stressed up, uh, busy. Right? So no peaceful sleep. Uh, so remember that. So next time when you grow up, don't think that the life is just changing for more and more things. Uh, uh, simple life with sufficient food, a reasonable house for you to stay, clothes, everything. Right? Most important, the mind must be peaceful. Uh. Uh, so this is a very important message, not only for students or young ones. They learn from young with better, even adults also. Uh, so then live complicated lives. Uh, 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 chasing after a lot of property, power, fame. Right? And then at the end, get a stroke or a heart attack. Right? Whereas, uh, I've seen some simple people in Burma, Myanmar. Right? They have the basic things, uh, simple food from their farms and so on, the clothes and the shelter. They are very peaceful, naturally smiling. Whereas I see the town people or some or city people are wow, very rich. Huh? Wow, I find a uh, very grumpy, la, bad temper, la, more school, la, right or not? Uh, most important, peace and happiness. Uh, let us now look at the next one. Be contented. Stress comes if you play for more and more. Uh, contented, very important. Uh, uh, was happy already, you have got already enough. La. Uh, you have tried your best already, get a good on. Uh, you, you study you like that, you uh, just do your best. And then after that, later on, then you go to continue your study, do your best, then you work, you do your best. Don't then compare uh, with some of the who are futurely rich people. Uh, but some have become rich uh, by crooked ways, you know. They are corrupted. Uh, they cheat. Uh, some rob people. Uh. Ah, you don't do that. You will suffer in the end. So, a person who always wants more and more and more cannot be peaceful and happy, right? They'll be stressed, so cannot sleep, worry also. People may, you know, chewy or take their things uh, or may lose their things and then they lose their fame and power. So, all these things trouble the mind, cannot sleep at night because they take drugs, right? Sleeping, barbiturates. Then the time comes, Addicted to the drugs. And then overdose. And sometimes they purposely want to kill off themselves. Suicide. So you see this uh, simple story. But there are good Dharma lessons for you to learn. A life of busyness and luxury will lead to suffering. Some people are. Uh, right? Young and old also. Middle age also. So busy. Uh, no time for anything else except to get more money. More property. I no time to rest, no time for sport, no time for dharma. Where they have time for dharma, right? And then they will accumulate more and more properties, so, uh, maybe one house, four, five cars, so, or maybe one to save the money to tour the world many times. So you ask them to do dana, some of them don't even want to do, uh, isn't it? So they think that this will give them happiness and peace, but it's not so, right? It's not so. When you find a time comes, uh, Wow, they get diseases and sicknesses already. Uh. So, uh, wow, very, very unhappy, uh, depressed already, suffering. Uh. Whereas some of the simple people, they are 
not so poor as to have no food. Lah. So you can get some simple food, simple house, right? enough clothes, uh, some simple education. They are contented, they are very happy also. Uh, they also have some education and so on. So remember, next time, uh, don't live a life of busyness until uh, no time even. Uh, some uh, can't have time to see their own parents also. No time to take care of the parents. They chuck their parents the old folks home. Right? And then they are busy chasing more and more uh, things. Uh, right? So this is not a wise thing. Uh. So, happiness and peace are more important than sensual delight. Sensual delights uh, would mean uh, Wow, the things that you see that you want, uh, wow, nice dress, uh, expensive one, uh, or you see a uh, wow, beautiful car, my eyes tell me so beautiful, uh, you want, uh, you want those things, or you say, wow, I must go to that restaurant, uh, one dinner, a few hundred dollars, uh, really very tasty. Uh. So these are all the sensual delights. I say, oh, I must have that 1,000 or 2,000 smartphone. Uh, iPhone, you know what, a seven or eight or whatever, lah, right? But we have students like that, you know. I remember this student uh, once uh, was like that, uh, and the grandmother phoned me, you know, said that, can you help uh, this grandson, uh, you know, Wunenchi or what, uh, now uh, the upper crying and making a lot of noise at uh, once, an uh, expensive smartphone, no. Wow, oh, like that, you know, right? Because of the compare with their friends. So they don't have the Dhamma. If they learn the good Dhamma, then they'll be contented. Uh, too young, no need smartphone. Or no need, uh, when you reach a certain age, maybe a simple phone. Slowly, uh, one step at a time. Uh, now many become sport and brats. Uh, right? So when they grow up, they will face more suffering. Uh. Uh, so happiness and peace are more important than sensual delights. Uh. Uh, so I hope you understand these points. So, this simple story, uh, you see, can teach us so many important things, uh, things that we can think about, right? So, remember the important lessons that you have learned from this story of the town mouse and the country mouse. Simple living, few ones, uh, don't be greedy, right? Just be contented, uh, and then at time also country mouse, I think the times were relaxing also. Lah, right? They can uh, play around with the countryside, the fields, and so on. Lah, right? And then also important, make sure that our minds can be peaceful, happy, right? Free from stress and danger. Right? So that's a lesson for today. And uh, I would like to thank all of you and the teachers of Sunday school, parents, grandparents, for taking time to follow this simple lesson of the fable from Esop and also the comments regard to the moral values and the Dharma messages. So to end this presentation, let us say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May all be well and peaceful.